Enter the world of biblical humanities, where an enriching symphony for the mind, heart, and soul plays at the crossroads of the Bible and the humanities. Hello, I'm Jesse Lee from the Hubel Center based in South Korea. The central theme of numerous classic Western novels revolves around the journey towards self-realization. Translating this theme into a spiritual context, it involves the exploration of our individual authenticity through a personal connection with Jesus. This initial discovery sets the stage for us to deepen our relationship with Him, allowing us to experience His love in a profound and personal manner. This idea resonates with the concept of unique conformity, presented by Trevor Lee, highlighting the holistic approach to discipleship within the church. While conformity has often been emphasized in Christian communities, there's been a noticeable lack of appreciation for individual uniqueness, the distinct talents and contributions of each believer. It's disheartening that we've overlooked nurturing the full development and utilization of our unique gifts and characteristics. Additionally, it's regrettable that we haven't recognized how these qualities can be utilized to address the needs of others and promote social justice within our own lives. Looking back on Christian history, how often have noble abilities been overshadowed by a narrow focus on obedience? Furthermore, how many opportunities have been missed because we failed to acknowledge the diverse contexts where these gifts could thrive? Over time, akin to the wider population's pursuit of wealth and social status, which refers to a person's worth or importance in the eyes of the world, the Christian community has increasingly focused on engaging in worship and fellowship within their local congregations. In doing so, we've prioritized certain spiritual gifts and activities, while neglecting our duty to care for and serve the diverse world and its inhabitants in their various circumstances. A concern that truly aligns with God's intentions. It's perhaps why the Old Testament prophet warned us that despite our abundant offerings and elaborate worship, they may be deemed vain offerings and abominable incense in the eyes of God. Isaiah, the prophet, underscores this message, declaring, bring your worthless offerings no longer, incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies I cannot endure iniquity in the solemn assembly. He then elucidates what God genuinely desires, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. On the one hand, we often commemorate Jesus' final instructions known as the Great Commission. Yet we often overlook that it encompasses not only a call to evangelize, but also to aid the vulnerable and uphold social justice, as highlighted by Isaiah. As we heed Jesus' directive to teach others to observe all that he commanded, how can we disregard the integral aspects of mercy and social justice? Let's pause to contemplate the significance of the two passages below, which provide a vivid portrayal of God's character and his genuine concerns. First one is Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 17 to 19, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. The great, the mighty, and the awesome God who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. He executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and shows his love for the alien by giving him food and clothing. So show your love for the alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. The second one is Micah chapter 6 verse 8, He has told you, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? In essence, God, or Jesus, maintains such impartiality that he does not take sides, therefore, he stands as the supreme God, who specifically attends to the plight of the helpless and unjustly treated among those created in his image, extending love and justice to them. It's evident what he expects from those who identify as his children, to demonstrate compassion towards the vulnerable, and advocate for justice on their behalf, mirroring his own actions. Delving deeper, how many Christians recognize that Jesus' concerns for the environment are articulated in his final words? As recorded in Matthew's Gospel? Before entrusting his disciples with the commission to make disciples of all nations. Notice the declarative statement Jesus makes about his identity. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. This proclamation asserts Jesus' authority not only in the heavenly realm, but also on earth, signifying his lordship over the entire world. 
including the physical environment and all living beings. Consequently, it's evident that he would be invested in ecological matters and their interrelation with the environment. He desires life and the environment to align with his will, not merely reflecting his will to a limited extent. The preceding pandemic we were grappling with was the culmination of a prolonged history of indiscriminate development and environmental exploitation driven by humanity's insatiable greed, all while neglecting to acknowledge Christ's sovereignty over the earth. It's disheartening to witness the church, which ought to be anchored in Christ, appearing to remain on the sidelines, not only intending to the needs of the vulnerable and advocating for social justice, but also in the preservation and restoration of ecosystems irreversibly harmed. Let us implore our Lord, who reigns with authority over both heaven and earth, to bestow upon us the wisdom necessary to fulfill these responsibilities diligently. May we, as we heed and obey this wisdom, not overlook the unique gifts, talents, and qualities bestowed upon each of us. I truly value your exploration of the central theme of embracing our authentic selves as depicted in numerous classic Western novels. I believe it has deepened your comprehension. Looking forward to our next encounter.